Welcome to First Impressions. My name is Carl Lee. And I'm Jason Headley. And this week we are reviewing Trees, number one, with uh, Warren Ellis and Jason Howard, I believe. Yeah. Um, let's discuss the art. Uh, I mean, I love the artwork. Mm -hmm. It's It's got a very um, kind of painter style to it. It all seems almost like an oil painting, I would say, a little bit. I don't know if oil painting is the right word, but it's it's definitely got a very unique style. Um, what are your thoughts? I don't know. I, I really like it. Um, it's I've never seen this guy before, I don't think. Maybe I have, um, but I really like it. Yeah, I've I mean, heard. really depicts the world well. And I like that, you know, in this issue you go everywhere from, like, New York City to China to, it looks like, the Arctic. And they all have very different palettes, and it all looks very different. You can really feel like you're in different places. Um, yeah, it kind of, it almost reads, it almost looks a little bit like a storybook, which I like. There's really some great contrast here. Like, it really, there's a lot of imagery that's just very, very deep. And just from a single image, you can tell a lot. And, yeah, I, I feel like the art in this, you know, we talk a lot about especially when we reviewed Future's End, we talked about how the art doesn't really service the story at all. Like it doesn't make, you could read the script and not have the art and get everything from it that you needed to. But with this, the art is so important. Like the art tells a story of its own and reveals things that are not revealed whatsoever in, this, in the just basic reading of it. Um, and that's really exciting. All right, story. What do you think? Um, I thought it was really, 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 really cool and so interesting because they did introduce a lot of little things and they just threw you in there pretty quick. Um, and everything was just so fascinating and interesting and you couldn't wait to find out more and they introduced, um, two characters mainly so far who seem like protagonists. Um, I feel like the character at the end was probably a pretty main character too. They just didn't do as much of that character, that woman. In the Arctic. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just, they just didn't have a lot about her. Um, to give you guys an idea, Trees, from what we can tell so far, seems to be about yeah. a world slightly in the future where these big things that look like trees just kind of came down from space and planted themselves in the ground all over the world. And every so often they just dump toxic waste, which kills everyone in the vicinity. Um, it's only, it sounds like it's only happened six times so far in the history of this world, but these trees have been around so long now that people are seeing them as normal. So yeah. it's not really... Yeah, this but it has to be, changed the world. The theme is like, oh, this has now become normal. This is the new normal. Yeah. And they kind of talk a lot about that kind of idea of a new normal. Well, I'm I'm excited about the second issue. Um, yeah, definitely. It's like like Carl said, it's a world that kind of drags you in. And when we got to the last page, I was like, I, I, I want more, you know? Yeah. Like, had this been a trade paperback, I think we would have just kept going. Like, we wouldn't have even paused to say, oh, do you want to read the next issue? We would have just kept turning the page yeah, it's very it was easy great. to read i and i'm going back to art but the visuals were really great like i really wanted to see everything in this world and they showed it to you little by little yeah it's odd with the the lady or she male person in the yeah okay, i wonder if we'll find out more about that place like what's she up to what's she up to why is she like standing outside she's up to like, a whole lot of touching got, herself she's got her door open and she's just standing inside it with her bra and panties on i mean why some she people do that, that on the weekends that's her thing yeah she's touching herself <laughs> That part I'm not really sure about, but it, it adds, you know, a new flavor, in, like, yeah. into this whole mix of, like, you know what I mean? The sci-fi, he-she's touching themselves and doorways and mysterious plants that are growing that seem to be mm, alien. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like what you said, too, is that it is really easy to read. I think, you know, I'm, for example, I'm a huge fan of Straczynski, but his work is not easy to read. Like, it's overly wordy. It takes forever to get through a page just because you're trying to, like, mm. interpret what he's talking about. And he has so many words just on a page. This is something that you can just pick up and read really quick and really understand it pretty easily. And even though it's an adult, like it's for adults, clearly, but it's very pick upable for anyone. And I think that's really cool. Okay, rating. Uh, I'm going to give it a nine. I was going to say something nine, too. Maybe nine, four. Nine oh, point four. Ooh, great. Nine, four. Ooh, yeah, nice. I, I was going between nine and nine, five. It's really good. It's really great. Very solid. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. If you get a chance, you should definitely read Trees. Mm -hmm. Warren Ellis is awesome, so you should have just picked this up on the pure whim that it was Warren Ellis like we did. So, give it a try. Did we do that with Moon Knight? Yeah, but, you know. 
We did. We picked up the first issue. We read it, and then we yeah. stopped reading it because it was Moon Knight. Aww. <laughs> I thought he looked cool. So now we're going to show you, as we do every week, um, we might do more comic reviews this week. We don't know. We're doing it a little out of order this week. Uh -huh. uh, but let's show you what we bought this week. All right. Batman 31, um, blind buy because I haven't been caught up, but Jason is, and he read it. I read it. It's awesome. Okay. If you're not picking up Batman, what? why? Why do you even read comics? Just go home. And know. we finally caught up with Batman Eternal, so we're ready for this. We're excited. Um, we liked it so far, yeah. so this is not an impulse or blind buy. We're buying it. Yeah. I haven't, haven't read this one yet, by the way, but it's uh, written by John Lehman, and I'm a huge fan of him. Yeah, so. that. Yeah. All right, uh, Nightwing, the last issue. Um, I wasn't going to pick it up. I thought the art was very uneven, just kind of whatever. And actually, none of it looked very interesting either. And it felt like it was, you know, wrapping up a previous storyline and then and just setting up the next book, which really isn't a big deal if you missed. So I really didn't think I needed to pick it up. But I just thought it over, thought it over, and then I ended up picking it up because I heard that maybe it was worth getting. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, all right, all right, I'll get it. I haven't read this issue yet, but I did see a post online, and I do really like a line that's in it. Um, Bruce and um, Dick Grayson are fighting, and there's a line where Bruce says to Dick, I trained you to live, and I watched you die. And I think that's a great, awesome line. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to throw that out there. Really cool line. Hmm. All right, uh, Cowl number one. It's written by um, oh Cal Higgins, who's yeah. worked on a lot of Batman books for mm -hmm. DC. And so this is his own book. And, that's um, exciting. Yeah, him. so that's why I just bought it blind buy, just because it's his own book. I want to see what he could do, you know? And the art looks really nice. Yeah, actually. I'm going to throw this out there, too. I love this cover. This cover has so much personality and so much style. It's awesome. It's a really great cover. All right, um, we got Dry Spell by Action Lab. This is the second Action Lab book. Like, last week I bought an Action Lab book, right? Who are they? Who are they? Where did it come from? So Dry Spell, this is a, um impulse buy. I just looked at it there's tons of dialogue well, actually way too much dialogue <laughs> like or even really stylized art. like i don't want to really read but it looks interesting to me enough to give it a chance you know yeah. it also says this book contains you know content for mature readers stay alert and i thought oh okay i'll get it it doesn't say not to read it if you're not mature it just says to stay alert about that content mm. which i'm really excited about it's yeah great. so i'm giving it a chance indie Cool. All right, Flash 31, um, blind buy. I'm not caught up with Flash, but it's Brett Booth and um, Wally West is coming back. So, I mean, there's a picture of him in there somewhere. Anyways, I just thought, whatever, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. And just flipping through, I, I'm not caught up on Flash either. I probably won't get fla caught up on Flash because I'm not a big fan, but I like the artwork in this book. Cool. Oh, my goodness. Why are we so We were this? not going to buy this. I told you. Features and four. We didn't think the last issue was good enough to really care about getting the next one and I looked through it and I was like yeah it just looks like the same old the same the same type of stuff you know um wasn't doesn't look like anything I would want to read but for some reason I decide I'd pick it up and this is probably gonna be our last time picking up yeah. features and unless this blows me away I mean because we are honestly actually didn't even get this and then just got it. It was like, it's like our last chance, Future's End. So if this doesn't do it, we're done. Yeah. I do like the cover, though. Yeah, the covers are all great, actually. Yeah. I love all the covers. All right, um, Nightbreed number one, Clive Barker. I'm a big fan of Clive Barker, and I'm particularly a big fan of also Nightbreed. I love the movie. I read the book, Cabal. Um, and so this is a blind impulse buy because I looked through it, and I, I'll be honest, I didn't think it looked that great. <laughs> I, I, so I'm not really expecting it to be good, and though it is, but I mean, it's written by uh, Mark and Draco. Um, that's cool. He's now doing um, Batwoman. Oh, so yeah. I don't know. And I, the guy, the cover artist, I love this guy. What's his name? Rismo. Rismo. You know what I'm talking about, right? You know what I'm talking <laughs> about. This guy. This guy who did um, Proof. Proof is a great book. Um, and of course, Southern Bastards too. Jason Aaron. And um, let me give the props to the artist, too. Um, Jason Latour. Yeah. So we read um, the first issue just last week or just this past week. And yeah. um, we thought, wow, this is some solid stuff. We loved it. Yeah. It great. And so it was pretty much, okay, we're getting the next issue. So yeah. it wasn't blind or impulsive. But I did look through it, and it looks just as good as the first one. It looks yeah. really complete, you know, 
it just looks great. It's like a TV series or a movie or something. Yeah, I mean, it's, I, I told Carl this when we read the first issue. I'm not a big Jason Aaron fan. Um, I don't hate Jason Aaron. I've just never been a huge fan of his writing. But this kind of changes my mind about him. It's just a really, really solid book. Mm -hmm. Um, really, really interesting characters, great writing. If you're not reading, if you didn't read the first issue, give it a try. It's it's great. But it is for mature audiences, so stay alert. Yeah. I think he also wrote the Thanos miniseries, which I thought was amazing, and he also wrote that, so... I'm basing most of my Jason Aaron feelings on his X-Men work, which I was like, eh. I didn't read any of his eh. X-Men. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that's our poll for yeah. the week. Oh, we also picked up Miss Marvel number... Four, mm. which I've read and it was great. Mm -hmm. uh, we also picked up Chu Revival, which I would only get if you're like a hardcore fan of Chu like me. It doesn't really or revival. do or a hardcore fan of Revival. Um, even in the book, it says like this could this issue takes place between issue forty and forty one, or possibly between issue fifty and fifty one. Like that's oh, what it true. says, mm -hmm. and so it could take place anywhere. It's just a standalone story, and it's just kind of a it's funny because Chu always is funny, but uh, you don't need to get it to really understand what's going on in the main world. So. Only if you're a huge fan, like me. Yeah. yeah. All right. Cool. Well, we will. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Make sure to let us know what books you picked up this week. What was your favorite book? Are we reading the right things? Is there something we're not reading that we should be? Let us know in the comments down below. Like and subscribe and follow us on Twitter. Thank you. Thank, oh, thank you. Thank you.